So a good friend of mine just sent me a bunch of paint samples. Um, I told her a couple different colors that I was interested in trying out. And so she was like, oh, I've got those. And um, I'll send you a couple of some of them are half pans. Some of them were like stuff that she put out on parchment and I can put in my own half pans. And then some of them are like her tubes almost gone, but there's enough that I can swatch it. Um, and then there were some just little dots. So I thought I would go ahead and swatch them out and you guys can swatch with me and we'll see what colors come up. So the first one I was going to swatch is our Windsor Newton. And this is guys. Okay. So I do not know my correct pronounce pronouncements pronunciations, my correct pronunciations of some of these paint colors. Um, and this one is Caput Mortuum Violet. I'm sure if I said that wrong, someone will correct me. Caput Mortuum Violet. Let's see if we can hold it up there. You can see. Mm, can you read it? Caput Mortuum Violet. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take this. She put a little bit here on this little toothpick. So we're going to load it onto the brush. Ooh, look how nice and thick that's going on. Ooh, that's pretty. I'll put a little bit more. Okay, so we can see. Okay, so it's kind of like a brownish. Looks like a brownish violet, maybe. Huh. So the whole, like, Latin part of it, like, put more to them makes me think of, like, mortuaries like blood. And then I'm like, this kind of looks like dried blood. I don't know. That's a little, a little grim, but, um, that's where my mind went. Okay. So this next one that we're going to do here, this is Windsor Newton's Windsor orange. And I asked specifically for this one because I am looking for a really good bright orange color. Um, I've got lots of reds and I've got some good yellows, but I don't have like just a straight up orange that's like pre-made. Okay. So I like this, but I feel like it's pretty translucent. You know, I tend to like my colors a little bit more like opaque, like that one. Um, just cause again, I've said it in other videos, but I really like my colors to scream on the page. Um, so that's a little bit light for me. I feel like Windsor oranges. Okay. Let's try this one. This is Windsor Newton's Terra Verte. I'm pretty sure I'm okay on that one because uh, I took French for a couple years in high school and college. So Terra Verte is um, how you would say it in French. Okay, so let's grab some of this. I'm really excited about this one because I've heard it's a really, yeah, it's a really pretty green. It's a really pretty kind of like light gray green. Be really pretty for like leaves, like eucalyptus type things. I think that would be really pretty. Okay, so that's pretty. I wish it was a little darker. I wonder if I could get some out of the tube, if it would be darker if it came out of the tube. Probably. Yeah, I think if I got a little bit more on there, it would become a little bit darker. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so Daniel Smith's Quinn Magenta, which is right here. We have just like a little dot of it to try out. So here we go. Daniel Smith's Quinn Magenta. Getting it nice and activated. There we go. Um, and how this all started is I told her, you know, I'm on a never ending quest to find the perfect pink. Um, I really love opera pink. However, because of the whole light fastness issue, um, I don't want to use it in a lot of paintings because I'm afraid that that's just going to fade over time. Look how pretty that is. Ooh, I like that. Hey, just for kicks and giggles, I've got Daniel Smith's Quinn pink over here. I'm going to kind of pull out that next to it. Okay. So Quinn pink's a little bit lighter. I also have Quinn lilac. Let's do that. Okay. So magenta and Quinn lilac, I would say are pretty similar. Okay. All right. Let's see what's next. Okay. So this is Holbein's, um, Chinese white. So whenever I'm looking for Chinese white, it's usually because I've messed up and I want some way to like lighten up dark paints that I've put down and I didn't mean to. Um, so my Chinese white, there's two of them in here and I went ahead and put some indigo on here. So let's pretend I messed up on the indigo and we're just going to kind of cover it up. Okay. That's pretty good. I ain't mad at it. Um, I do have Holbein's permanent white, um, 
gouache. And that has really made a big difference for me too. Okay, while we're talking about Chinese white, let's go ahead and do, I have this right here. Um, this is Sennelier's Chinese white. And you know I'm a Sennelier fan. They're pretty much my main brand that I go to. So let's try here. Like, I feel like it needs to be activated a little bit more. I can feel like that sticky honey kind of that you get sometimes with Sennelier. Okay, so I feel like in this particular, I don't know if it's just not, that's not activated correctly or what, but uh, I feel like Colbine won this Chinese white contest. I feel like it's a little bit more opaque. Um, that's good to know. Okay, let's move on. So here we go. Another Sennelier. This is Cobalt Violet Light. Cobalt Violet Light Sennelier. Here we go. Get it going. Ooh, that's a pretty color. It's kind of like mauve -y almost, huh? Yeah, I really like that. But of course, I like it because it's Sennelier, and I pretty much love all Sennelier. Okay, this one is Holbein Blue Gray. It looks really like, it looks like Smurf Blue in the pan. So let's see what it looks like. Yep, pretty much Smurf Blue. Um, so one of the things I do love about Holbein is that they are, a lot of them are really opaque. And this ten, this looks like it's a regular Holbein opaque. Um, yeah, because I'm even trying to like rinse it off my brush and like stretch it out a little bit. Like, psh, 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 and it still doesn't want to go translucent very much. So um, yeah, that would be a regular opaque Holbein color. Um, just like their Shell Pink, I have Shell Pink and it's very opaque. Um, a couple other ones I feel like I have that are just opaque. So um, that would be one of them. Okay, here we go. Let's try this one. This one is Mission Gray of Gray. I have been looking for a really nice light gray. Um, I love Payne's Gray. You know, it's one of my favorite colors, Payne's Gray is. But I really sometimes just need a light gray and I don't want to mix one up. So, ooh, look how pretty that is. I have to be honest, this is the first time I've ever used Mission watercolors. So that was, that was one of the reasons why she sent me some of these because I was like, oh, I've never tried. I'd never tried Mission and I'd never tried Schmincke. And so I have both of those brands in here to try. Look how pretty that gray of gray is. Like that's a really pretty like dove gray. And it may on the video look like it's a little opaque, but there's a little bit of translucence here at the end. Okay, let's see what's next. All right, we did that one. This one is Compose Rose by Mission. Again, you know, this all started out with me trying to find the perfect pink to replace Opera Rose. So let's see. Ooh. Oh man, that may be it. I don't know what the light fastness is on this Compose Rose by Mission, um, but I am definitely going to be looking it up because that's pretty close to Opera Rose right there. That's probably the closest on the sheet so far. Um, hold on, let me grab some Opera Rose from my palette. Okay, this is Daniel Smith's Opera Rose for my palette. Oh, that is a little bit brighter. But I mean, yeah. I think Compose Rose, though, is probably closest, like, especially if you compare it down here to these, which is what I was using as my substitute. Um, Compose Rose is a lot closer, I think, to the Opera Rose that I'm trying to um, replace. So I'm going to look up the light fastness on that. That's interesting. Okay. Let's see, we got, this is Quinn Red by Holbein. Let's see. Oh, that's pretty. Um, it reminds me a lot of, and we're gonna try it here in a little bit, I think, um, Winsor Newton's Permanent Rose, which I guess makes sense because it's like just a darker version of Permanent Rose, right? Um, but yeah, this is Quinn Red, just a really pretty light red. That's nice. Okay. All right. Let's see. Who's this? This is, that's Composer Rose. We did that one. Here's Windsor and Newton's Quinn Magenta. Maybe I wrote down Quinn Red. Maybe I meant Quinn Magenta. All right, here we go. So this is Windsor and Newton's Quinn Magenta. This was Daniel Smith. So here's Quinsor, Windsor and Newton's. Well, that's pretty. It's going on nice. 
and get a little bit more water so we can spread it out just a little bit and see what it looks like. Okay, so here's the Daniel Smith Quinn Magenta, and here's Windsor Newton's Quinn Magenta. This one looks a little bit more purpley. It's got more blue undertones to me, I think. Um, and then just to compare, this is Daniel Smith's Quinn Pink and Quinn Lilac. And if I'm looking for a replacement to Daniel Smith's Opera Rose, I still feel like out of all of these, the Mission Rose probably is, or the Co Mission's Compose Rose is probably the closest. Although that Quinn Magenta from Windsor Newton is really pretty. Hmm. Okay, continuing on. Okay, so this next one is one that I've been curious about for a long time because a lot of people use it. It's Jean Brilliant by Holbein. Um, so it's like that kind of peachy yellow color I've seen people use. Oh, that's pretty. It is a little translucent. That's nice. Let's see if we can. Yeah, I would say it's probably a little bit more translucent lucent than um, like our Holbein Blue Gray down here. I feel like this is probably more on the edge of like Mission's Gray of Gray, probably same translucence as that. Okay. Moving on, let's do Windsor Newton's Permanent Rose. I already actually ended up buying this because um, I found it on sale, but we'll, we'll swatch it out just because it's here. It's part of the fun. And see, I really like this color, but every time I use it, I just feel like it's so red. It's got lots of really um, warm undertones, whereas Opera Rose, I feel like has more blue undertones. So, like, you see the difference between the Compose Rose and the Permanent Rose? I think I really like that Compose Rose a lot. I mean, this looks almost the same as Holbein's Quinn Red. I mean, that's, Permanent Rose is pretty much a Quinn Red. Um, like, their Windsor Newton's Quinn Magenta has more purple in it. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So here, I'm excited about this one. I've never tried Schmincke before. Um, but I hear about it all the time from artists online. Schmincke is like the holy grail. So we're going to do Schmincke's Brilliant Purple. Oh, that's pretty. Look at how pretty that is. Ooh. That's really pretty. Let's see if we can pull some out. Nice and translucent. But you can still get really bright and dark with it. Oh, that's really nice. I do like that. Okay. Last but not least, this one I'm really excited about too. This is the, one of the Daniel Smith Duochrome um, paints. This is Daniel Smith Duochrome in Blue Pearl. And I've heard that you have to work on these to activate them a little bit. So I'm going to kind of like rub it around for a little bit. Make sure it's activated. Okay, I see stuff moving around on it. So that makes me think we're good. And get a little bit more water. Okay, here we go. Daniel Smith Duochrome Blue Pearl. Ooh, look, that's pretty. It's nice and shimmery. You know how I feel about shimmery paints? Um, I kind of always feel like my friends on Etsy do a better job with the glittery paints than like the big mass producers. But uh, Daniel Smith, I would say this is pretty good. I'm pretty impressed with this. Okay, let's do a quick comparison. I actually have um, Windsor Newton's like metallics. Let me grab their blue and let's see what, what it looks like compared to this. Okay, so I've got my, this is Windsor Newton's metallics. This is iridescent blue. So we'll wake it up too. We had to wake it up just like um, we did with the Daniel Smith. So Windsor Newton, this is more Huh, this is more, I would say Windsor Newton's is more pearlescent. Whereas Daniel Smith's actually has some sparkle to it. Like there's actually some glitter up in there. Um, I would also say that Daniel Smith's has more pigment to it. Um, like I would paint with these metallics, the Windsor Newton metallics, probably on black paper and it would show up just fine. But the Daniel Smith, I think I could paint on regular white paper and it would show up just fine. Um, okay, so let's go in as things are drying, and let's take a look at them. So we have our Caput Mortuum again. I don't know if I'm saying that right, um, but it's getting more and more blood-like and kind of like old crusty blood. I don't know if y'all can see that. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like a brown. 
Uh, I don't know if I like that. Yeah. Okay. This is why we're doing this. So I don't have to like, you know, make mistakes in purchasing things. I still really like Winsor Newton's Terra Verde. Um, you can get that color if you mix in Hooker's Green and Dioxine, Dioxazine Violet. Um, but you, it's still, it's a little bit more gray when that happens and it's not quite as light and pretty. This one is like really ethereal. I really like that Terra Verde. I mean, it dried darker than I thought it would too which is, I thought it was going to be really light, but it's a whole lot darker than I thought it was. That's nice. Okay. That Windsor orange, mm, that's lackluster. I want colors that scream, especially when it comes to orange. So I'm not, I'm still on the hunt for an orange. If you know of a good orange, let me know, leave it in the comments because I want a nice solid orange, like a bright orange, not fluorescent because again, light fastness is an issue. Um, but I want like a good, like punchy orange. Okay. Daniel Smith Quinn magenta right here. I like it as for pink, but I like Mission's Compose Rose better. Um, and I feel like Quinn Magenta is pretty much the same as Daniel Smith's Quinn Lilac, and I have a ton of that. So I'm, yeah, that's a pass for me. Um, okay. The Chinese Whites, let's talk about that. So Holbein Chinese White and Sennelier's Chinese White. I feel like Holbein's is a little bit more opaque because that's just how Holbein rolls. Um, but I've got the gouache and to compare... Let me grab some of the gouache here from my palette just to do a comparison. Like, do you see how much, I mean, it's thicker because it's gouache and gouache is going to be thicker, but, um, for my purposes, I feel like the gouache works better because again, the reason I wanted a Chinese white was because I mess up and I make things too bright. Um, cause I like my colors to scream. And so this helps dial it back a little bit. All right, Windsor Newton Permanent Rose, I already have, and I feel like it's a little bit reddish undertones. It's almost like a coral, like kind of like a corally color. And so um, it's pretty, but it's not quite the pink I'm looking for. Schminke, Brilliant Purple, oh my gosh, like it's gorgeous. I love that. Um, really pretty. That might have to go on my to get list. Okay, Mission Rose or Mission Compose Rose, that is definitely on my target list. I will be going after them. Holbein's Quinn Red, I feel like is very similar to Windsor Newton's Permanent Rose. Um, I feel like these two are very similar. Um, Windsor Newton's Quinn, this is Quinn Magenta. Let me mark that out. I keep, here we go. Quinn, put that in there, Quinn Magenta, okay? So I feel like it's very similar to the Composed Rose, but I feel like the Composed Rose has a little bit more staining than the Windsor Newton does. It's just a little bit more punchy. Um, and so again, if I'm trying to replace Opera Rose right there, Daniel Smith's Opera Rose, I feel like this is a whole lot closer. Holbein's Jean Brilliant is gorgeous. And I see people use it. I just, like, I look at that color and I'm like, I don't know what I would use it for, except for maybe painting like portraits of people, but then people use it in flowers and stuff and it's gorgeous. So I don't know, this may be one that I have to like mix in with other colors and see, see how it rolls. Um, Mission's Gray of Gray, gorgeous. Love this color. This is also going to go on my target list probably. Um, Sennelier's Cobalt Violet Light is really pretty, and I love Sennelier, I do, but if I had to choose between these two, and I feel like they're very similar shades, I'm going to go with Schmincke. Schmincke wins like the mauve kind of throw down there. Um, that's really pretty. Holbein's Blue-Gray, I'm like, meh, it's kind of like, I have Sennelier's Cinerous, I'm, I'm probably saying that wrong, and if I am, someone will correct me. Cinerous, it's like C-I-N-E-R-O-U-S, Cinerous Blue, Sinelli Cinerous Blue. I feel like it's very similar, but it might even be like more punchy. Hold on, let's grab some. Yeah, it's got a little bit more blue undertones to it. But I mean, Sennelier's Sinerous Blue, like it's got a little bit more blue undertones, but I mean, it's, it's pretty similar. And then we have the Daniel Smith Duo Chrome Blue Pearl. Dried really, oh, it's not dry. <laughs> Dried really nice. Um, really pretty shiny, especially compared to the Windsor Newton Iridescent Blue, which like has glitter like around the edges, but nothing in the middle except for like some watery pigment. So um, let me try one more thing. So these are some glittery pigments that I got on Etsy. And this one I think is called Kelp. I think maybe I'll, I'll post it in my description. I'll post the Etsy link too. Um, but it is very similar to the Daniel Smith duochrome, like the way that the glitter and stuff works in it and the way that it moves. Um, so I have two, I have 
the Etsy one I, for Fern and Kelp from a store there on Etsy. Um, they're handmade and they're really pretty, but they remind me a lot of the Daniel Smith duochrome blue pearls too. So, um, lots of fun, good stuff. And I think I've got a lot of paints now to add to my to purchase list. So thanks for swatching it out with me and have a great day, guys. Keep painting.